Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule the Waves as Italy, episode number 28. So the last episode was a bit frustrating. We had the result, which was actually a really positive result. And I, I think I'm, I sometimes bog down too much on the imperfections. I am very critical by nature. So um, but that's not necessarily what people want to listen for in a video. I mean, basically negativity, it's uh, having a critical eye is very nice, but maybe presenting it in a positive manner would be better. So I'll try to stick to uh, more of a positive theme. We aren't doing so bad in this war, you know? I mean, we have, we finally eked out despite the massive blockade penalty we've been facing month after month. We're not doing so bad on unrest and uh, we're actually ahead in victory points, which is remarkable. Now, uh, to say that this is a difficult war is quite an understatement. They have seven dreadnoughts and a battle cruiser to our three dreadnoughts and a battle cruiser. Um, now we do have a three battleship advantage and one armored cruiser advantage. We are also down. This is funny. I was actually looking at the names to rename the ships. I realized that actually the two or all the light cruisers we had, the Vescata ones, have all been um, renamed already. So they were all the correct names as I mean what they should have been. Tower Mina and Asanzo. These were all already changed names from submissions. And it's great that I wasn't be, I wasn't really able to tell that because, you know, that means that <laughs> the ships were named well enough that I couldn't tell. Now, we have our battle cruiser and we have um, just a bunch of destroyers working up. I'm going to try to force some kind of weird engagement by choosing um, raid on my battle cruiser. Maybe she'll get into a special situation. Not sure if that'll work or not, but um we'll try it anyway well great i was gonna say that we really should be uh no we got it we got to take this we got to take it to them that was quite a sizable drop in money this is convoy defense with just two oh our dreadnoughts are back Okay, well, let's see what happens here. I'm going to play very aggressively, so let's see what happens. And we also have the Etna here, which is interesting. Playing on captain's mode, which is good, which is good. What are we facing, though? We only have one battle cruiser. this could be, and it is. Let's try to lure them in. I think I'm okay with luring them in. It's their it's their necessity to engage. And what I mean by that is it's their job to engage. If they don't, um, we we win because they don't sink anything. Okay. And we are now moving right at their battle cruiser. Hopefully this armored cruiser gonna try to do something weird and push across maybe this will force the duquesne ah the dreaded duquesne yeah we've seen your kind before i don't even know why you would dare come back at this way let's see if we can pursue She has 27 knots she's capable of making. I think we just push right at her and try to get any kind of hits to slow her down. Come on, game. Do me justice. Let's push up with our armored cruiser. See if we can persuade the Duquesne to do something silly. This might be the main battle line. I'm going to be okay with it if it is. I think it is. Yep, it is. Okay, so let's see how this goes then. Etna's taking some hits. Let's just get her, push her back. Hmm, Duquesne's doing well, unfortunately. She's hitting us. Time is just about evening. Okay, let's do this. We'll free the Etna of any duties. She's not, she really just, 
not going to do much. So I'm going to put her down to cruise even. Just take her basically offline entirely. We could use these destroyers though. And now we actually hit the Duquesne. No, the Lombardi was hit by the Duquesne. This Duquesne, man, I swear, it's a tough, tough ship to kill. Well, let's swing back around on these battleships, because this is a fight we can win. Let's go to AI control, turn off AI control here. And we'll do it this way. I guess we'll push like this. Like so. Now, what do we have here? We have the Requin. And we have the Marengo. We can win this. I know we can win this. We have the massive superiority of ships, which is like not something we're going to be able to take advantage of very often. So you're just going to stay on cruise at a distance. Marcus Grippa, come bring you down. I want to get close. I want to engage. They are also going to engage. Fantastic. Now we're, we can pin them with our destroyers. Okay, so let's engage. Requin's taking some, or Lombardi's taking some hits. Turn on engagement so that hopefully the destroyers know what's going on here. We'll switch over to our... Okay. I mean, this is it. Are we launching right now? We are lobbing full broadsides, which is great. I think you're, you are an Africanus. Okay, this one is not. This one is a Regulus. But even the Regulus has more armor than our strategic dreadnoughts, so. And all the, all the while, here comes our destroyers sneaking in. Sneaking in. Okay, sneaking in a little bit more. Tur <laughs> Torpedo tubes hit, of course. Okay, so that's only two down, but we, uh, yeah, we're, obviously that's not good. Boy, the Marengo is taking some massive hits. This is fantastic. We're going to push the um, battleships, our old pre-war dreadnoughts, our pre-war battleships, I should say, towards the battle cruiser. These guys are basically just going to make a loop in. Okay. Torpedoes are already being launched. The Marengo is, is doing the wrong thing. Okay. We did launch. We did launch. We did. That looks like it might miss. Ah. Turn back up. We did launch at the Marengo as well. Let's move south. No. Maybe go to the Marengo. Did we get, did we, did, was, is it a hit? Oh, man. Now, somebody was mentioning that because of the scale, we can see here, that this ship is like twice what it should be. I don't think that's true, actually. This looks like it's only, okay, yeah, I guess the scaling, it probably would be, that looks like what, it's probably like 300 yards. That's not absurd for a dreadnought. Yeah, that is. Never mind, what am I? 300 yards is probably, I don't know the length of these ships. It's probably like what, like 130 yards is what the, yeah, so these are, it looks like they are double. However, if you look, these torpedo tubes are definitely passing within um, the length of the ship, half of it. So I, it's not just that. It's just that the torpedoes don't hit sometimes when they go right through the middle of a ship. So I don't know exactly how the hit mechanics work. That's still a mystery to me, but let's put you to AI control, but then actually control you just to encourage you to launch torpedoes. Oh my god, please, please, please. What is even hitting you? Oh, it's this one. Just launch your torpedoes. Okay, get these guys to pull aside. All right. All right, do your own AI control thing then. I don't know what you're even doing. Can I just manual target? Does that mean that I can now launch torpedoes? Fire torpedoes. Oh. I can do it! It even has sound effects! What? <laughs> we did it! We fired torpedoes! Unfortunately, right at our ships, but hey, I'm just happy it, it worked. 
I have never gotten that function to work before. Okay, charge on in, charge after this rec one. In fact, we're just gonna go right after her, like just directly after her. Why is your jam to port? Crap. All right, let's try to do this. I don't care who, which of you will separate. One of you, please just separate. Let's detach, okay? Damn it. I can't detach you because you're definitely not just sufficiently damaged. So unfortunately you're breaking. Oh, it, it did work, it worked, it worked. We had two torpedoes and one of them hit. Okay, so you know what? Fire torpedoes. Wait, wait, wait why won't it give me this dialogue this time? Bring up that dialogue again, that was wonderful. Can I, how do I do this? No, 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 um, yeah, um, and fire torpedoes. It didn't work, but you know what? We hit it once. Ay, 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 this is difficult. I can't believe that ship already sank. It's crazy how fast that happened. Um, okay, whatever. We'll just, we'll route you back to the Requin anyway. We don't want you to engage. Okay, good. The Marchius Agrippa and Ilione de Venetia have now separated their link, which is good. I have to say, I want to focus on the Marengo because... I want to sink the ships I know I can sink. I don't want to have a situation anymore where I don't end up sinking the ship I want to sink. And we're really putting the hurt on this Marengo. She's already lost two of her guns. Another, a third one is um, disabled. So, okay, you know what? I think that with that, and I don't mind that they even have a battle cruiser. That just gives me an opportunity to do a battle cruiser duel later. And I have my battle cruiser plotting around, which I would love to have duel. So Ileone de Venetia, your job is now just to follow this Marengo around until she is sunk. That's it. That's your mission. Just follow her around until she is sunk. And you are going to make a run for this dreadnought. We're actually even launching torpedoes here, which is you know unnecessary, I would say, but that's fine, just keep the fire up. The Lombardi, even despite her damage, is still putting on a good show. She does have a fair amount of flooding too. Let's actually just pull her sideways and drop her down to eight and turn her off. Basically pull her away from the fight. We have enough ships, and by that I mean even just our, okay, pass through hit, but that should not be, it's just a, a hole in the ship, small hole in the ship. That's fine, we're okay with that. Let's have you hold torpedo fire. You have only two torpedoes left anyway. Hold that torpedo fire until we can force the Requin to to basically change course. That's what now this ship is all about. This destroyer is cutting off that um, the Requin, and the Lombardi is limiting flooding. She just launched her torpedoes. Wait, does that mean you don't have any left now? No, you still you have two after launching those. Oh wow, interesting. This is interesting. We are still hitting her, that's fantastic. Good job, Chibo Glorioso. The Leone is still hitting the Marengo with those 12 inch guns, this is perfect. Heavy damage, down to five knots. Yeah. So this is great. We're actually gonna turn a little bit because despite the fact that she now has three turrets destroyed and was hit by a torpedo, maybe two, I don't know. I, I can't remember anymore. Let's, maybe it's worth revisiting. One, just one, but has taken a lot of hits, my goodness. Anyway, she's in real trouble, is the thing. So let's not put ourselves in a position to get hit by torpedoes. And we are still just drilling her with fire. It looks like you've repaired your damage, you have, so we're gonna slip, slip right, let the Marengo slip right between the two and just pound the crap out of her for as long as possible. Um, the Requin has already diverted north, which is fine. Lombardi actually, okay, I don't know how much flooding you've controlled, but that's quite a lot. We're actually gonna push you to squad max just to avoid you taking too much fire. The slower they go, the more damage they take. Um, yeah, so just push this way, that's fine. Wow, okay, so very good. We finally had a little bit of good fortune go our way in terms of flash fires. I think we had not such good luck last time with that. So this is good. Um, 
amazing, I should say. I kind of feel we were going to track her down, but you know, she could have slipped away. She could have done critical damage to one of our ships. So that's a really good, it's quite good fortune. Yeah, we'll have her pick that, uh, pick up the survivors. We'll take all the victory points we can at this point because we are fighting against that blockade. Although eventually, hopefully we'll wear that out. And that's probably too far to be hit by torpedoes now. Okay, the Marchius Agrippa is our Africanus class. We're very happy she's in this. Um, Etna, you can even come in. If we have an opportunity, we will slip off and try to pursue the battlecruiser, but it's unlikely. And we're so near port, let's just have the Lombardi go right to port. Is she still flooding? She is, but honestly, we can probably take her down to... Let's take her down to 8 knots, and I think that she'll be able to get to port before the game, the mission's over anyway. So let's just make sure that we are dealing with this Marengo appropriately. Yeah, I definitely want the March of to go in and get some damage done. Um, you know, I want to swing back out wide because I don't want to take any torpedo hits. Looks like her rudder is jammed or something. And we're still... Usually when you're mauling a ship like this, it's because they're already going down. Yeah, you, I mean, the, you're hitting, this and hitting them this many times. But she's lost... She doesn't even have the capability to fire back right now. <laughs> But we'll let the Ileone de Venetia finish her off. What I'm going to do is have the Marchius, Marchius Agrippa hold fire. He's going to continue with our two other Dreadnoughts. And like I said, we're going to let the Edna... Actually, I'm going to let the Edna alone finish her off. Pretty sure she's sinking. Yeah, three knots. I guess that's the indication that she is sinking. I've been informed that if they say three knots like that, it had been saying 21 knots if you want to check previously in the video. So this is supposed to be some kind of indication that they are no longer uh, really in the game. That the game has written them off as sinking. So we'll get you to come down this way. And we'll see, we'll just pursue a small amount. Now they probably are just going to go to port. And if that's the case, well, we're not going to pursue them too far for fear of running into a mine. In fact... Let's let's just call well enough. Let's just call. <laughs> What's the expression? Wow, I'm totally blanking. Let's call something well and good enough. I don't know. You get the picture though. There's no need to push our luck here. Let's leave well enough alone. That's it, right? Maybe. All right, we're pounding the crap out of the Marengo. She's already sinking anyway. She's totally actually sunk. So we have two confirmed kills, which is great. Like, extremely great. It's huge. Um, nighttime anyway, so it was a good time to not pursue, turns out. Get everyone to just go on home. And thankfully, because we have uh, Captain's mode on, we don't have to worry about Anything else? And we will yes to all, yes to all, and just squad max, because you'll get there for sure. Okay, very good. They failed. We lost a destroyer. We sunk two dreadnoughts. Now, this is the kind of exchange I can really get behind. <laughs> really an amazing fight. I don't understand exactly why things went that well for us. That was, I would say, just pure luck. Sometimes it goes against us, and I complain a lot. So let's take a moment and just appreciate how well my ships performed in this one. Like, substantial difference in, uh, in like, accuracy, I would say. Let's, let's see, they probably have hit scored. 10, 5, 4. Oh, actually, so it, look, the Ilione de Venetia was the real hero of the group. Now the Marchius Agrippa also 24, but it was actually our... Somebody was saying, you know, um, I wish that instead of your new light cruisers that my, my old battleships had been sunk instead. And yeah, I mean, when I saw that comment, I immediately agreed. Like, you know what? You're right. However, at the same time, our our old ships are still... I mean, I guess it's the same crew for like 15 years and they're they're pretty accurate. Here's the hit percentage I was talking about. The Ileone Division, over 10% accuracy, which is just insane. So really... <laughs> really good job. Okay, so we'll call that battle to a close, and let's see what that how that impacts us. Another 10,000, so we're way ahead, and that is definitely, this battle of Sardinia is for sure a memorable one. 
some one that we'll look back on and may even indicate like kind of swing the war in our favor. So they're down to five dreadnoughts and a battle cruiser. Let's uh, with our all our ships returning, let's turn you off. And let's actually see, do they have anybody in Northern Europe? They do have three light cruisers, which is nine points. If I move there with my battle cruiser, it's 10 points, which is the 10% bonus we need. However, I would like to stop the blockade first. So let's just see what happens. The Lombardi's gonna be gone for three months, but once we have the Regulus back next month, we just need a few other of our destroyers to show up as well. We're barely holding our own in terms of um, coastal patrol, but we do have other minesweepers that will be finishing in just three more months. And you know what? The, this budget is actually to the point too high. I think we, we have to buy something here. And I don't know how many minesweepers we're getting, but I'm always comfortable buying more. But these destroyers have performed well. I certainly don't mind buying a few more destroyers. Let's do that. Wish I could just pay for the money up front so that our monthly balance doesn't decrease, but our, uh, well, it will slightly for maintenance only, but that'd be really nice if you didn't have to pay. And yeah, why, why wouldn't you be able to do that, right? Just pay them out of pocket. Because I don't like this monthly balance which constantly decreases. I want to just drop it down to 50 million, but let it keep increasing by a lot. That way I have a real idea of how much more how much space I have for battle cruisers or whatever, as soon as we can just for some reason get one big gun, please. Come on, Italy. Come on, Italy. I know you can do it. All right, so what do we want? Three more Lebecchios is really barely gonna tank. I mean, our monthly balance is so huge. Yeah, it's so big that it's worth it to design a new ship. It really is. I can't get a, we really can't get a Battle cruiser or battle or dreadnought yet, we just don't have the ship the gun caliber. But that's not that shouldn't stop us from designing yet another. I know, weird, but let's let's just see what the next light cruiser might look like. Let's just see. I mean a lot of these things are perfect. I I mean I like a lot of this. We'll drop this down to five. This up to two and two. Just increase this a little bit. 28 knots is fantastic. It's going to be really fast. This is only 5,000 tons for this. Um, of course, this is a terrible configuration, so we won't do this exactly. This sea turret, I just, I cannot ever use it. Sorry. So we'll use a D&E the same way. This is basically going to be the same thing as our other one. We have the above ship one, so this thing can go 28 knots, no problem. It is literally five months away from being all uh coal sorry instead of using coal we could use oil am i okay with that that does make them more expensive you know there is a trade-off here let's take this number of guns down as well ah this looks good in my opinion four torpedoes per side one two three four five oh we only have a mm-hmm and Let's do this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't think I can do all the configurations I've done. I can. I can actually get a seven, six inch gun broadside with increased elevation. And how expensive would this be? It'd still be under 5,500, huh? It's insane. I mean, I, I, how do I disagree with this? How much is it to increase this? It would take a lot to get this deck up to two, but that would make it a real gem. I don't know why, I guess we haven't got director mounts on light cruisers yet. That means that this ship class will have to be refitted pretty quickly. Having the engines as coal does increase the weight a little bit. But, I mean, this is not that expensive of a ship. It's only, I mean, it's 24 million. Which certainly isn't cheap. But, gosh, I mean, it has all the bells and whistles. It has everything that I would want on it. Everything I could want on a light cruiser, this thing has. The only problem is its endurance, which is not going to be terrible because we already got the quote-unquote increased endurance uh, machinery improvement. And I think that mainly relates to fuel, but I think it also means that 
these ships can run at a higher speed for longer without without losing um, speed. And actually, you know what, to be honest, the top speed of this can drop off a couple knots down to 26 even and still be pretty darn fast. Seven six inch broadside, because we can, let's be a little particular about the placement of our things here. I think this will look good with one right there as well. I like it. I really like it. And you know what? We're going to go with it. So who is going to get this ship? We already have Marches Group. Let me just check my supporter list first. We're good there. I think we're ready to drop down to the main people. So the Libeccio is a, I didn't mark this as used, but that's our, that is our uh, destroyer class. Um, okay, here we go. We have the Sarnano. Yeah, there it is, the Sarnano class. Sounds Italian enough for me. And we are also going to have a bunch of uh, ship. And this is a great light cruiser class. It's certainly going to last us the end of the game. We have our 30 mines on it. I think that's perfect. Yeah, okay. I just, I don't see anything wrong with this. All or nothing. We got, we got the massive deck, so this thing is even going to be um, immune to splintering. Conning deck of five. I mean, it has the gun shields, so it's not amazing, but... Enough for splinters, at least, I think. I really like it. Let's go with it. Let's build some more Sonanos until we can get at least... Um, so we want this to match. It's going to take a little bit for the original. You know what? I'm actually going to do these one at a time. There's the 2 million. And let's build another one. Because I am going to type in their names exactly. Because we have the Bella... Lugosi, I don't know what the hell, the hell that is, but there it is. That's the next one. And we'll build one more. And this is going to be the, <laughs> not sure about this, but Strangola Preti. Strangola Preti. Okay, fine, fair enough. It's uh, Italian enough to pass. I don't know Italian, so I have the benefit of not knowing what any of these things mean. The benefit, I say. Um, and then we have the Positano, which sure, why not? We'll take one more, the Positano. Great. And we're still at 3 million, but the good news is that did knock down the funds a little bit. So maybe we even want, no, I was going to say the next one is called the Fire Flash, but Air Terranian, come on, you know that it has to be in Italian. That would be appropriate enough if it was, we were playing as the British, but I won't fly for the Italian names. Let's go one more month. We got some of our destroyers. Only the Navy can win this war, of course. Uh, weight savings on machinery. Honestly, uh, you know, it would be nice if we had that on the light cruiser we just built. Not a huge deal breaker, I would say. Not a huge deal breaker. Would have made probably the ship a little bit cheaper. But I'm okay with that. A convoy attack. Well, we've been doing okay with the... I would say that the convoy attacks have been going our way. We were still blockaded. Damn it, I should have checked to see why that is in our... Oh gosh, our ships are starting to become obsolete. That's not going to help them in, in battle at all. But you can see the Martius Agrippa and the Ilione de Venetia. These are both elite ships. That explains. I don't know if they were elite beforehand, but you can see that they were so close to elite that they must have really high crew quality. So that I, I think that that explains how they were hitting so well in the last, bite, uh, last fight. And maybe that is one advantage that we have over the AI, the other countries, that... After going to war, a whole bunch, our ships at least, I mean, our crew are very used to war, so they should be veterans. Yeah, let's accept this convoy attack. I suspect it's going to be destroyers. It is. That's okay. That's okay. We can just turn around and run away from this fight if we have to. I just want to know what we're up against first. Okay. Squad max. Squad Max. If it's just destroyers, I'm okay with that. Okay, the wind advantage is to the south, so let's try to take a hold of that.
Here we go. Okay, we did hit one of them, but geez. Oh, we did launch torpedoes too. Well, it's chaos. I just it's whoever hits who now. And they will have to turn away. Hey, what do you wait, what do you what do you know here? Let's slow this down a little bit. Oh <laughs> right through them. But we are forcing them to turn away. Oh! Did that hit? That torpedo ran out of fuel the moment it was about to hit somebody. It's crazy. Now, I think we've actually damaged one of these pistolets, and what we should do is keep going. Don't turn back quite yet. Let them leave a distance for that one, and then go back and just uh, destroy it, because that's one more victory point. I mean, one more strategic point that we want to eliminate from the French. And maybe even two here we can finish off. Well, they're still defending themselves. Okay, that's the convoy we're now starting to spot. I think this is like the same member of the group, the division, and didn't want to leave his buddy. Well, you should have. Okay, we're starting to hit that. An AMC, no, no, those are transport. I mean, those are transport ships. Okay, we definitely have this one. Let's also take out the other one. If we can. Okay, let's push on with you. These guys are probably both dead. Probably being the operative word there, so we will try to make extra sure. Oh man. Yeah, this one has defended herself well. In fact, are you gonna sink? No, but you've taken a lot of damage, so let's bring our destroyers back. Well, um, let's run them through, I guess, first. Let's put you down to cruise and just, oh my god, another hit. Just turn you away, make you a very narrow profile. <sighs> hmm. Almost, almost done with this one. I think we're just going to go after this destroyer. They're both moving too. I, th I think we're the one taking damage still. Okay, you know what? If you have any speed on you at all, let's put you to AI control. Yeah, I don't want... I can't believe that we're losing after doing so well in the beginning. Let's get out of here. Get out of here. Abandon the idea. <laughs> One second here. Um, actually, I'll call this video to a close. So, thanks for watching, and I'll, I'll just pick this one up briefly in the next episode. Until then, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned. Take care.